Joining us now, Phyllis Chesler, author of the new book, The New Anti-Semitism, The Current Crisis and What We Must Do About It. Phyllis, welcome back to America's Forum. My pleasure to be with you as always. Now, a spokesman says the attack early this morning was not terror-related or premeditated. Uh, your take on that, and should it at least be categorized as a hate crime fueled by anti-Semitism? I'm not certain, but it reminds me of the pogrom in the Jerusalem synagogue of only two weeks ago, where uh, jihadists came in with butcher knives and knives to slaughter the Jew. So whether or not this will ultimately be seen as the act of a mentally ill person or somebody who hates Jews and is also mentally ill remains to be seen. There are conflicting interpretations of whether it's a hate crime or whether, on the other hand, take the man and his word. He wants to kill a Jew. He brought a knife and he stabbed a Jewish person. Speaks now, for itself. Now, Phyllis, in the immediate aftermath of the September 11th terror attacks, you walked over to your computer and you typed in this sentence, now we are all Israelis. What did you mean by this? Well, you know, Israel has been on the front line against barbarism and on behalf of Western civilization for a very long time. It hasn't been understood. Now, 9-11 happens, and I see, I saw, that we would all now be in the Israeli position of having to fend off jihad, infidel hatred, ex the kind of atrocities that are being perpetrated by Muslims on infidels in the Middle East and Central Asia, the kind of atrocities that Muslims historically have perpetrated against other Muslims. So now all civilians everywhere, anywhere, are at the mercy of jihadic terrorism, which is a religious war against the infidel and for greater lands for 7th century Sharia Islam. Phyllis, 9-11 defined so much for really all of us, and it was at that time that you began research on the original version of this book, this book you've since expanded and revised. Can you go into some of the areas that prompted revision and expansion of this work? Yes. For example, one area was uh, I no longer call suicide terrorists suicide terrorists because they are human homicide bombs. When you say suicide, it evokes compassion for someone who must be suffering. But what Israel and the Jews and the West happen to be up against is not mere suffering of indigenous peoples. We are up against a very well-financed propaganda campaign against post-enlightenment Western values and against every possible Judeo-Christian and for that matter Hindu or Zoroastrian tradition that is not Islam. So these are human homicide bombs and um, then the idea of what is a settlement? You know, there's so much in the mass media against blaming Israel, demonizing Israel, because they have settlements. The settlement that offends in the completely Jew-free, Judenrein-free Arab world is Tel Aviv. The fact that the Jews have a sovereign state is what offends deeply, and there can be no negotiating and very little appeasing. And I give America similar advice in terms of our negotiations with Iran. Uh, red lines passed. Iran is on its way to becoming nuclear. This is a very clear and present danger to everything that we hold dear and that is familiar to us in our tradition. Uh, Phyllis, very quickly, uh, about 30 seconds, have international Jewish organizations, have they done enough to combat this rise in global anti-Semitism? No, because the Jews have denied it, have tried to appease the aggressor, have said, listen, don't kill us because we really feel your pain. So Israel has been on the front line, as I said, alone, standing up for Western civilization, for which it has then been hated and demonized. And this has to stop. This has to end because Israel and the West 
especially America and Canada, must be the strongest of allies. And we will have to leave it right there. Phyllis Chesler, author of the new book, The New Anti-Semitism, The Current Crisis and What We Must Do About It. Phyllis, as always, we thank you for your time. Now, thank you. what about pictures you make involving the police? Alan Dershowitz has this segment of You and the Law. Have you ever been stopped by a policeman for a traffic violation? Of course you have. Millions of Americans are regularly stopped by the police for traffic violations and other reasons. Now here's the question. Is it legal for you to surreptitiously hit the record button on your smartphone and tape the conversation with the police? Well, it all depends on which state you were stopped. If you were in about a dozen states like Massachusetts, California, or Florida, don't go near your record button. In Massachusetts, the top court has ruled that recording a policeman is a crime, unless you tell the cop you're doing it. Many states have privacy laws that make secret recording of anyone illegal. And in some states, you're free to record the policeman in the exercise of their duty, but not to record other ordinary citizens. Illinois passed a draconian law saying that if you tape a police officer on the job, you could face as much as 15 years in prison. An appellate court overturned the law, and the Supreme Court upheld that specific ruling, but it failed to rule on the issue as a whole. The Massachusetts case was particularly egregious because the cops were spouting racist talk to an African-American driver who recorded the conversation to protect himself. Instead of the cop being fired, the victim of the racist talk was prosecuted. Bad decision, but it's still the law in that state. In 38 states like New York and Virginia, it's legal to turn on the record button, but don't do it in general. I advise you not to, because if the policeman catches you, he might figure out some way of getting even. And don't forget that in almost all states, it's legal for the police to audio and videotape you. Many police, even on traffic stops, have microphones attached to their body and are recording your comments. In other places, the police have video on the hood of their car and they're recording your movements. So don't forget that fact and remember your state laws and act accordingly. I'm Alan Dershowitz for Newsmax TV.